Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Mario and today is day five of the all new Go Wise USA air fryer oven and today we're going to be doing kebabs on the rotisserie. Stick around. So I've actually never made kebabs before and didn't research anything but one thing's for sure is I think these pieces are too big. So I'm going to cut these all down to more manageable sizes. If I was doing this let's say on a, a an outdoor grill I could probably leave them in bigger chunks. However, this is being done in the air fryer oven, and um, you know, I think I'm going to be limited to the size of what these can be. These tips I just picked up at uh, BJ's, of course, and uh, I picked up some chicken thighs earlier as well. I tell you, ever since I sharpened this knife with that sharpener I bought, and I'll post a link maybe, um, this thing cuts great. You know, looking at this now, I obviously. Uh, cut up too much of the steak but that's okay because uh that just means i can have it uh more than one day it'll be all prepped so i am going to put the steak in one bowl here this is my meat cutter we'll do the same thing for the thighs probably should have uh cut out some of the fat here on this but uh i'm being lazy today going to depend on some of my viewers perhaps uh, Kirby will chime in because uh, I'll be cutting the vegetables later the peppers and onions and I'm sure he will uh, give me some good guidance or any of my other viewers out there. Last time I made steak I used my Montreal steak seasoning, but uh, one of my viewers mentioned that I should use my Montreal chicken for the steak So actually I'm gonna try that this time I'm gonna I don't know how much I should be putting in here, but I'm gonna put a boatload and then uh, I Find as I mentioned before with the Montreal seasoning I find I have to put a lot more in than if I was just using salt and pepper So let me mix this up That looks okay now I'm gonna mix the chicken all right okay i'm actually going to cover these and i'm going to put them in the refrigerator for two three hours to let them sit for a little while and then we'll get started making the kebabs so i thought i had some green peppers i don't so i'm just using what i had and to be honest with you i'm not sure how to properly cut these and gut them or whatever but we'll make do these smell good though i'm gonna cut that in half We'll get all these cut. I think this knife could use some sharpening. Okay, I don't need this whole thing, so I'm gonna cut it in half somehow. And cut this in quarters. So I got 10 skewers here, I'm gonna start to put things together. I don't know what order I would or should, but uh, I'm gonna start with uh, maybe an onion here. And I don't want to go all the way down because the way it sets up in the jig, you need to leave a little space on the front and the back. So I'll put an onion, a piece of steak, maybe a red pepper, an orange pepper. Well, no, let's put another piece of meat. Orange pepper. Decided last minute I'm going to do some of these tomatoes on here too. Little cherry tomatoes. And uh, we'll keep going with that. That's one. And we're going to do a chicken one and we're going to keep going. Okay, I think we're going to get started with this. Had I thought about it, I would have made one complete veggie one. Uh, I'm probably going to disassemble one of these so that someone could see uh, and look at how it looks like all veggie. Okay, I think you get the point with the all veggie. Now, this is going to be in a rotisserie, so the juices from the other meats will get on this. But again, I just want to do it as an example. Got plenty of meats left over for another batch, so I'm going to close these up, clear up, and let's get going with the cooking got so excited I forgot about putting these on the uh, skewer uh, holder so this is the rotisserie and you'll put the spare through here and clip the handle in here and you can fit up to 10 on this I got it set up I might have to adjust it but uh, let's get going I'll put one here that's how it sits right in there I could probably move some of the meats over after but let's get going on this this is the veggie one here. Again, it's gonna, uh, you know, 
get uh, flavors from everything else, but that's okay. One other thing I don't know is the cook times. If the meat is going to cook slower than the chicken or not. The chicken usually you cook at a higher temperature, you know, uh, than the meat. You know, 145. Once and uh, the chicken maybe about uh, 170 or so. So I have to figure out. I have this slot misaligned. I think I have to go over one here. I think this is meant to be kind of universal, depending how you line up these plates. I wish they would have did a. A better job with that but it is what it is okay look at that that looks pretty awesome all right now let's get going with the cooking okay as mentioned I kind of have this off to the side so I have to take away all the storage pieces out of here. As you can see the drip tray is installed now the rotisserie I'm gonna put in by hand because uh, it's cold, although I don't know how I'm going to be able to handle it, so maybe I should use the tongs. So here's the thin end of the rod right here. And there's the thick end. This is a slightly different design. Let's get, see if we can get a close-up of that. That's nice, huh? All right. So, get that in there. This is actually pretty heavy. Put the right side in first. Let's see if we can't get that in there. And that fit in there quite nicely. This is probably a good call with this. It might have been kind of awkward trying to line that up. That looks good. Close it up. Power it up. Going to go over to the rotisserie setting. Uh, 400 I think might be a little too high. I don't know. So I'm going to actually lower that to 370. There is vegetables, beef, and chicken. So I'm going to err on the side of caution. I can always turn the temperature up later. And this should turn on any second. There we go. Everything's turning. We'll see in a bit. This is my halftime reminder that in the description below you will see links to my Facebook, Instagram, Google Plus accounts where you can see daily updates of what I'm up to. And also there's links in the description for some of the things that I use in the video. Okay, this has been going about 10 minutes. I want to take a look here. The beef is about 148. Let's try the chicken. 157. We're going to let it go a little longer. So it's what I expected. They're not cooking at the same rate. But that's okay if uh, the beef cooks a little longer. I'm not too worried about it. I'm more worried about the chicken cooking to the right temperature. We'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, that's 15 minutes. We're going to take another peek. We're going to wait for the chicken and the beef to be halfway here. I think the problem I'm running into is that the, the blower motor is still running and it's screwing up my temperature readings. So one time I think the meat's done. The next it doesn't appear to be. I might have to take out the carriage to get a more accurate reading. 145 on the beef. Let's check a piece of chicken. I have to get this to rotate. I can't get a good fix on it. I'm actually going to take this out so I can get a, a, a good fix on the reading here. Set it on this plate. Power this off for now. That was a 15 minute run. We'll check a piece of chicken. Looks like there may be a, a slight hot spot in this oven. Not 100% on that. Okay, chicken appears to be done. I do want to flip this around, or maybe I'll just spin it around. Check some of the meat. Okay, I think we're good. So we're going to let this sit for a few minutes, and then we'll give it a try. Okay, let's pull a chicken and a steak off. It came off fairly easy. And again, as I mentioned, I'll probably cook chicken and steak separately next time. There you go. Let's give that a shot. Kind of forgot. I gotta take these off the skewer. If this had been uh, like a, a wooden skewer, I would have just ate it right off of there. Now we taste. Let's take a look at that. All right, I'm a big fan of, of beef, but I don't eat it as often as I'd like. Seasoned nicely. getting some of the flavors from the peppers so I'm trying to figure that out right now Let's try the chicken chickens cook nice trying to see how the steak is cooked looks like it's about medium well 
little color in the center. Looks good. Mm. I like the chicken. Orange pepper. Piece of onion. Piece of red pepper. <clears throat> so this actually was pretty good. Um, as mentioned, next time I make this, I'm going to have to separate the meat, the beef, I should say, from the chicken because the chicken cooks a little bit slower. And I want to make sure that, you know, I cook the chicken enough. Um, the meat might have been a little bit more cooked than I would have liked it, but still not bad at all. Um, you know, it's also the type of cut of meat that I got from BJ's as well. Uh, some, it's hit or miss there as far as the meat goes. I have plenty more steak that I get to try. So uh, I'm eyeballing the piece right there. We interrupt your regular program with this breaking news. Donna loves the steak kebab. Natalia, who loves steak, and that's all we can get her to eat when we go out, she loved the chicken more than the steak. So that is actually good news, and I'm happy about that. Now back to your regularly scheduled program. Anyway, um, I'd say, again, this is a success, because this is something I can't do in the air fryer. I'd have to do it out on the grill. Uh, it took about 15 minutes. If I had um, separated the beef and the chicken, probably would have been about 13 for the beef and maybe 16 for the chicken, and that would have been fine too. Um, so I'm gonna rate this uh, above average, uh, because again, I can't do this with my other air fryer or my Breville for that matter. Anyway, uh, thanks for joining me. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing and hit the notification bell so you know when I'm putting out a new video, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot. Don't forget to unplug the air fryer, folks. Good evening.